Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today we've got the Wingsland M1. So this has been on pre-order for quite a bit. And it's a bit confusing because the price fluctuates massively. So I ordered this about, I don't know, a couple of months ago on a pre-order. It arrived yesterday. And it took about 10 days to get here after it was initially shipped. So I paid 134 for this, but I think now it's showing at 200 quid on the website. So it is confusing. And a few of that from Banggood and a few other places. Like so this is what you get in the box. I took it out of the box because to save money, it just comes in and out of the cart and there's no fancy box saying Wingsland on it or anything like that. It just comes in a brown cardboard box. So you get the drone itself, which has a three axis gimbal, records in 1080p. And 10 HP is its highest resolution it'll go to. Well, there's your gimbal. It's actually a quite nice looking gimbal. On the back here you've got the transmitter, which is a 5.8 gigahertz transmitter which goes to the screen, which is this here. So it has a 5.8 gigahertz transmitter built into it and a 5.8 gigahertz screen with a 42 channel receiver built into it. It has a 5200 milliamp 3S battery with a power indicator on the back. Now, unlike DJI's, you have the power indicator to tell you how good your battery is, but there's no on and off switch. So this is, once you push it in, the drone's live. You get the battery charger. So you get the cable. And this is the battery charger. It is proprietary, because it's a proprietary battery, and the charger plugs into the back there. And it's a little, it's quite a nice looking charger actually. I'm quite surprised how nice that looks. But it has got a proprietary battery. So you get that. You get one set of props. Screw on and they're 10 inches. These things are massive really. Uh, if you think of a Phantom has nine, this has 10. So it's a bit bigger than the Phantom. And you get the controller. So the controller runs on six AA batteries in the back here. I'll go through the controller functions with you in a minute because they're complicated. So it has all these switches and a little jog wheel at the back. But this is quite... A, it's not complicated but there's things you've got to work out what these buttons do and stuff. It reminds me very much this of a Phantom 2. So that's what kind of thing it looks like. But I think it came out at the same time as the Phantom 3 and I think when it came out it was a stupid amount of money. Uh, which was never going to be worth in a million years, but for what I've paid for it, I'm hoping it's going to be okay. And then you get proper removal tool, so you put that round the motor there and you spin your motors off. Very similar to what you got in the Phantom 3 and a USB cable. And this. Now if you've seen this on the listings on the website, it doesn't show this. Um, it shows the different kind of mount, but that's what I got with mine, whether it's come, if you bought one of these and it comes with a different one. Let me know in the comments below. And then you get a user manual. Did you see that one? Now, this will make a really good beer map because it's a completely in Chinese. There is no English on here and also there's nowhere near enough information to get this thing in the air on here. It doesn't tell you what does what, it doesn't tell you what the screen does or anything. So, chuck that in the bin. If you search on the internet, you can download this and it's not, it's a, if you just put in Wingsland M1 manual, it's the first thing it pulls and this is the proper manual, so this has got everything in it and you're going to need this for its switches. So I need this to one side because I still can't remember what the switches do when we go through everything. So let's power it up and show you what you get. So like I say, transmitter on, but oh, I'll just show you that, so this transmitter is mode 2, but you can make it mode 1 and it does say in the listings that it's multi-mode, so Hold them two down, them two out, and turn it on. You'll hear a single beat, puts it into mode one. If you do it again, you'll hear two beats, which puts it into mode two. It's nothing to do with the startup beep, nothing to do with that one. That's just to tell you the transmitter's turned on. Your battery plugs in the back here. Okay, and you've also got this cable here, and that's for doing updates. Now, nowhere in the manual that comes with it that's in Chinese, does it tell you that anyway, but if you get the other manual, it'll tell you where to download the software for, if you want to do a firmware update, and calibrate and do various things to it. Your battery plugs in the back here. There you go, so, it's now 
turned on. Now, when I first got this, and I turned it on yesterday, I thought, ah, that's not good. My gimbal's all out of skew. If you look at the back of the transmitter, you've got this little joystick. Okay? If you move the joystick, it moves the gimbal. Now, unusual for these, you normally get tilt up and down, obviously, like you do on everything else. But this one actually goes, actually goes left and right. Now, as you can see, let me show you the gimbal, how smooth it looks. It's quiet and smooth. There's no notchiness of anything about it. That's your gimbal. Okay, on the top of here, you've got a lot of buttons. Okay, so, I'll try my best to explain these to you. So, on the this side, you've got L1. So the middle position is stabilise smooth GPS mode. In other words, that's how you'd fly it. That button in the middle. If you go all the way up. Sorry, no, I'm lying to you. That is your stabilise mode. I'm, tr I'm reading this from a, from a manual. If you go to L0, so in other words, up. So that's middle, so that's stabilised full GPS. If you go to the top. You have it in manual mode, and if you go to the bottom, you have return to home. Yeah, automatic return to home. So, up is manual, middle is GPS, down is return to home. On this side at the top, you have your standard ready to fly mode. It's called, so it's a three position switch again. So in the middle position, you've got your standard mode. So that's standard fly mode. If you have it in all the way back, that is point of interest mode and it will flash the lights on the back of the drone and then if you have it all the way forward it puts it into headless mode okay these things could definitely do with labeling but if you remember middle and middle you're going to be fine so most people are going to fly this with the switches in the middle okay on the other one you've got if this is in position one, it's in capture mode for video. Sorry, it's in sorry in position zero, right at the top, it's in capture mode for video. If it's in the middle position, it's camera settings mode, which I'll show you in a minute. And if you go right to the bottom, it's in video. It's in picture mode. To start and record, stop recordings is this switch here. Okay. Compared to modern stuff, this is quite weird and complicated. So you're thinking, well, how do you adjust anything? So, this is your screen. This is your 5.8 gigahertz screen. It comes with a built-in, I think it's a 350 milliamp. I don't actually tell you. So this isn't the one that it shows you on the picture on the site, and it isn't the one that it shows you in the manual. I think the one in the manual is a little tiny square one, because that's what it would use to come with. And so you've got another enough switch on the back. So you flick it on, and you've obviously got 5.8 gigahertz, so you've got the view from the drone. It's not the best in the world, but it's alright for what it is. I probably won't fly with this, I'll probably attach another monitor to it, but I'll do the test flight when I do this, eventually, with this. Now the test flight, unfortunately, can't be done for a little bit because um, Storm Gareth is here, so I wanted to get this video up to show you, because if you, I know a lot of people have ordered one, and they haven't got them yet, so I just wanted to go through with you. So when you get it, it makes it a bit easier for you. And if you haven't got one, you can make your mind up whether you'd like to maybe think of buying one. So that's your screen. So the last thing I need to show you is the settings. So if I put the R1 button into the middle, I'm going to get Chinese writing. Don't worry too much like that because the manual shows you what the icons are. And you've only got to mess with one anyway, really. So if I use the jog wheel, if I use a little joystick on the back, you'll see I can go up and down through my menu. And I'm just using that at the back. And if I go to the top one, that's my settings button. And if I click the R2 switch forward, here I can adjust it. So I've got 19, 20, 10, 80, which one I'm filming. Press it again, I come out of that. That's looped recordings, HDR on and off, adjust your EV value. And then I don't know what that one is because I think it's incomplete Chinese. It does tell you in the manual, so it's not that bad to be honest. So and then you can flick all the way out of them I'm not sure how I get back to the other one 
You have a setup as well to adjust your time and stuff. On the top, let me just flick all the way out. I think you've got to go in and out of the mode, go back into it, and then go straight right. So I've got adjust your time. Like I say, these are in. Oh, here we go. You can change your language. Let's find English. Look at that. Well, that's a bit better, isn't it? So you've got language, format your SD card, turn everything to default on what version you're on. So you can adjust your date and time here because that's so much easier. So you've got resolution, video duration, HDR, exposure value, date stamp. So if you want to go into your date stamp, let's make sure it's turned off. I don't like the date stamp being on. So if I don't have the date stamp, I don't have to bother setting the clock. So that's your screen. This bit's actually quite intuitive to use once you get used to it. All you've got to remember is that's that turns it on and off and that selects. So if I want to come out of this mode, I simply knock the switch up. With the switch up, that's now in video mode. And to start a video, if I was saying, it'll, you hit that button there, put that all the way, and it says please insert card. There's no SD card in here. All the way down, and have it in photo mode. There you go. And in the middle, we'll always come into this mode. So you can adjust it when you're flying. So that bit, it's, it's actually, for the money I paid for this, this looks really promising. I've seen some video footage. Um, of it, but not recent of when it was done originally when it originally came out when I presumed it was a lot of money and it's not that bad actually, it's not, it's, don't get me wrong, it's not the standard of, tomorrow, of modern drones today but it's not that bad at all so that's basically the drone so what I'm going to do is I will have a video up shortly and I'll show you how to do other stuff before so I'll also go through the gimbal calibration well, I just need to show you this, so on the top of the drone You've got some really nice lights. And they really are nice. And this little chart tells you this, tells you here. So solid orange, solid orange. So solid orange, solid green, solid blue. Is GBS stabilised mode? Flashing means it's not got enough. It's not got enough satellite. It's picked up eight in here. So and then low voltage, lock mode. So it should go solid orange and green flashing slowly when I put it into lock mode. It's not that button, is it? Ah, it has to be, it has to be in the air, doesn't it, obviously? It has to be in the air and set off. So, oh, and I can just show you to put the switch back to normal, put everything in the middle again. Down and out to start it. And then just hold your throttle down to stop it. I've got this in mode one, obviously. So. It actually sounds quite... It does remind me a lot of a Phantom 2. It even sounds like one, to be honest with you. It's got that kind of sound about it, but... That's not necessarily a bad thing. Switch it off. So that's basically it. Like I say, I'll have part two video up and before I do the flight I'll show you how to do the calibration because I haven't gone through anything like that yet. Maybe I should have held that button down. Um, I'll go through all that with you on the next part of the video. And I can show you how everything works. Maybe I'm going to sound them both, because that's better. So yeah, we'll go through that on the second part of the video and I'll show you the flight footage and you can make your own mind up. Just wanted to do a quick overview and introduction today. So thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.